Um, hello, uh, Kyan, uh, engineer, Kane Engineers. Um, I am Steve Adler, the guy who's going to, um, who's been having troubles trying to read out two uh, of your digital boards, the 1725 boards, uh, at the same time. So I want to show you the setup that I have, and I'm hoping that you can reproduce it in your lab so we can get to the bottom of this uh, readout error that I'm getting. So to start, um, here's my setup. I have, here's your VME uh, crate and the two 1725 boards. Um, I have a bunch of uh, cables, some uh, readout cables, some input signal cables going in. And um, the main part of this is I have some extra signals coming from here's some phototubes there's a source underneath this phototube here so there's some sources right there you can't really see them but anyway so I have three phototubes putting a signal in and then I've got this waveform generator and this waveform generator is um, actually these two signal lines one for each board, okay? I'm pretty sure I can get the hanging situation without the other PMT, the actual PMT signals, which are these three. But these two here are the two main uh, sort of post generated signals. Mm -hmm. Now, the signal generated, the way I've set it up, is um, I have, it's a uh, 200 kilohertz signal and let me um, let me see what we can do here I'm going to take let's see this guy here I'm going to plug him in here and um, this cable here I'm going to set this down All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm plugging in the signals. And basically what I have, I don't know how well you can see this, but there are <clears throat> half a volt pulses uh, that are about 40 nanoseconds wide. Um, and let's see, uh, that's 40 nanoseconds per channel, so it's about... 80 nanoseconds wide and with a frequency of about 200 kilohertz okay so that's the input function that I am generating so this is all right so it's the pulse the pulses that I'm generating from this wave generator there's a two channel wave generator okay and I had a little fun <clears throat> and I changed the slope so they sort of look like little pulses with a um, fast rising edge and a slow falling edge and they are a negative polarity so I have this thing set up in negative polarity mode um, okay so now let me plug these signals back in give me a second <coughs> almost there hang out hang on guys all right, so I've plugged my signal cables back in. All right, so now here's the computer. So I wrote a tool which I'm going to be sending to you guys. Um, it's basically a command line readout with a whole bunch of command line qualifiers and so on. And I'll explain to that that to you in the emails. But when I run this one, this reads out um, one of the boards. And you can see that we have a 200 kilohertz rate. The um, this doesn't focus very well, but anyway, it's a 200 kilohertz rate um, of on channel two um, board on the second board. Okay, so this thing is now running properly. All it's doing is reading out the signal, unpacking the event. So it can count the number of events and then tosses the rest of the data out. It doesn't actually do anything more with the data than that. All right, and then here I've got the um, 
another terminal and same readout but I'm now reading out a different board <clears throat> and here you can see I have the two other signals from the PMT and on channel 4 I have the pulsar going in All right, and as you can see it's running fine now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to this other terminal and I'm going to run the readout from the first board okay and it fails almost immediately now if you notice over here the readout has hung the scalars are not changing anymore oh, and there's a communication error okay so it doesn't even start so um, now the odd thing is I have let's see what do I have as the record length there's R here I don't know how we can see it but there's uh, a record length that I can set if I change the record length to 256 on this one and start the readout and then I come over here and I change the record length to 256 256 then it seems to run a little longer I think let's see uh, nope I guess that's not true um, it looks like we're going to get a communication error and oh there it is communication error so it didn't, didn't even start now let's uh, I'm going to turn off the waveform by setting this to zero so now I'm not reading the waveform anymore and um, I'm going to go to here and I'm going to turn off the waveform set that to zero and okay now they're reading out both simultaneously uh, you got your 200 kilohertz and this I think lasts a bit longer but it will eventually hang I think but anyway when I was reading out with the waveforms you saw that it just couldn't the communications failed you get my got that communication error now um, again this isn't multi-threaded this is two separate processes that are actually reading out each process is reading out a different board um, okay so I have a feeling that the communication error that I'm getting is not really a multi-threaded thing but since it's buried inside the driver it's going to occur with either a multi-threaded setup or a up oh, there it is I got my communication error on both of these guys all right okay anyway so I've been able to uh, generate this communication error with the test tools that I wrote for you guys um, and I'm going to email them to you and um, hopefully you can replicate this setup on your system and we can get to the bottom of this communication error okay all right, thanks a lot guys